deep in the heart of Texas, PBR Teams has landed in Longhorn country as the Moody Center rolls out the red carpet for the home team. The gamblers plan to let it ride and strike big. This is a PBR Camping World Team Series right here from Austin, Texas. <laughs> As we welcome you inside the Moody Center, it is already here, the halfway point of the PBR Team season. This stop, Gambler Days, marks stop number five. Welcome right up to our Tractor Supply broadcast booth. Well, the Gambler fans, they are in the house alongside Matt West, PBR Team's champ, Ryan Dirt Eater. I'm Kate Harrison. And Ryan, last time you were around the Bulls, you went home with a buckle with the Nashville Stampede. How many times has Coach McBride called you and said, can you come out of retirement one more time? Jokingly, a couple of times. <laughs> or maybe not yeah. joking. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know that Coach McBride was joking after being a part of that championship run and understanding what can happen in Las Vegas. Congratulations, first and foremost, of finally getting that gold buckle. But welcome to a new venture because the TV side of things is so much different. Thank you very much. Like, there is so much energy here, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. It should be good watching. And we start with the ride right here in Austin on a Friday night. Carolina's on the board early. Talk about that versatility that came into play right out of the gate right there. It did not let it bother Cooper. That's what Cooper does. He keeps the chin down, goes to him, that bull kind of come out. There's a lot of stuff right here happened. He got around there, looked good. Great bull ride, Cooper. Empty Glass wanted to go back and hit the bars before he turned back out. Talk about the patience it takes on the back of one during that. It takes a lot of patience. Like Cooper, he just held his position, kept his posture, and stayed square, and he did what he had to do. I know we're just blocks away from 6th Street, but you're already talking about hitting the bars. We're one bull into the night, Kate. Slow down. We got a lot of bull riding to See get to. See what did there? There's <laughs> bars on the back of the shoe. I like it. I like it. Of this year. Here we go. Sit up. Hang on, hang on. That's the grit, <laughs> determination. What effort you just saw from Olison. Yep. Easily could have been on the dirt halfway through that ride, but instead, it's a qualified ride, and we've got a close one. Yes, it was. That, that, that's what you, you were talking about. You know, with, with Cody Lambert, that grit, that determination, that is something he will not take no for an answer. You have to put out the effort. Will not. Time started perfect. It is under official review. Good look at our replay official, Alan Jordan, there in the truck, and our guy showing him everything he needs to see, every angle, every yeah, camera. He made, he made it, He's guys. got him. He made it. How yeah, do you that do that? That was good. That was good. That was that was all grid is what that was. From Lambert, Lambert and JRB, those guys inspired guys like Brady. Brady hey. just stepped up and made a great bull ride. Has all the makings to lead this team. War Daddy's the bull. Keep riding. Oh, yeah. Keep riding. Keep riding. Murray. Fielder Good. is on fire. Perfection one week ago, and he comes back here in Austin to start off the same way. Texas has found Ooh. another guy that is now hitting a hot streak. We talk about Joao Ricardo Vieta and the three, four, five, six rides consecutively that he put together. Now, as soon as Brady Fielder got his first qualified ride this season, he's stacking them up. He is now four in a row and a big one for his Rattlers here today. That was a perfect ride by Fielder. Rode up on his legs, up and down, into his hand. That was pitcher perfect. Tosa does find the whistle, but scary moments as he gets hung up. So good to see him on his feet. And now Carolina can take a deep breath and cheer because they are back on the board. That was a that was a great bull ride right there. That bull wasn't the easiest one to get by because he had some good he had some good jumps there, then he had some uh, out of timing jumps. Yeah, but here's where it gets scary here. I mean, you talk about when this bull changes directions and what a cool vantage point from right down there on the dirt next to the bullfighter. But that it's scary, and the end of that ride looks like the inside of my brain most times. Just all over the place. Our bullfighters jumping in there trying to take care of him. 
Great job by them, and most importantly, the fact that he walked out of this arena and is back with his teammates right now. That's the big thing. He's aboard standoff. Bull gives up qualified rides about half the time. Keep running! Keep running! Standoff was showing off with the tricks today. Second rider in a row we saw hung up by the spur like that. And what worked from our U.S. Border Patrol protection team? Yeah, we talk about it week in and week out. It doesn't matter what trio is out there. They are so impressive. Ryan, you've been there. This week we're taking a look at, at Cody Webster, Lucas Teodoro, Nathan Harp. How good are those three bullfighters? We have the best bullfighters in the world. And we know when something like this happens, they're going to be there. Scary moments right there, and there's nothing you can do. You talk about a helpless feeling. You got that spur caught in that rope, and you're kind of just along for the ride. It's a helpless feeling. I've been there before. It's a scary feeling, and you, you can't do nothing but just try to get away from it. And have faith on those guys that are coming yes. to get you. Ride, Carolina gets another one. You called it. Hey, that was a great bull ride. I just, I seen that bull before, and I, and I knew him. Confidence is high. Carolina team, confidence is high, and they put him on that bull for a reason. You called it right there, around to the right. That is a perfect matchup, right into Flavio's wheelhouse. Play to his strength. Give him one into his hand. Let him celebrate with a big score. Backs up a ride just one week ago with another one. This one, 86 and three quarters. Gives Carolina a huge lead. One game in the books. It all started off with getting rides from both Cooper Davis and Brady Olison. Ultimately, Cowboys, they win on points and that extra qualified ride. So Carolina, they went from not being able to find the win column a week ago and now right back in it here in Austin. Well, one game in the books. The next one to come, it is Missouri Thunder, Arizona Ridge Riders, two teams have been on the wrong side of the win-loss column and looking to turn it around on a Friday night from the Lone Star State. I, I love that mentality and that ideology of being able to step up and make it huge. Yes, great bull ride. You want to make a move, Missouri? Just go to your 18-year-old Matson gets it done, and the Thunder roll early in Austin. That is why he's on the Missouri Thunder team right there. Coach Luke and Ross knew what they were doing when they picked him. Well, they knew what they were doing when they put him in that situation to start the game off. Now, all of a sudden, Missouri's the team with the hot hand in this game when you look at it like that. 87 and a half points going back to the rider of a bull. Two and a half points marked over the bull. Yeah, 45 for Cade Madsen. That means he was good enough to be 90. He needed a little bit more bull, but they still got a great score. But everybody wants to win every game, and it starts right here. We already see flags being thrown. Fajita going straight for a Parasito. So Parasito, he does come down early. That is the first time he's bucked off that bull. But we saw some flags on the ground. And Luke, what are you hearing back there? Yeah, they're talking like he got fouled there in the shoot, and they're wanting to see if the back judge here is going to let him get a re-ride. But the way it's looking, we're not too sure. Luke, as you work on translating that, we're going to go back and take one more look at it because just because a buck off happens, the play is not over. It's still dangerous on the field. It, it still is. There's a lot of stuff that happened here. He come out backwards. He, he didn't look like he hit himself. And then Fajita was a little hot. Chased him all the way down. Sizzling. Oh, and Nathan Hart grabbed that bull by the horn. And that bull said, no, I'm not following you. I've got my sights set on Eduardo. And he just, whew. He, he is very comfortable in there. Bull ride 
Whitman that snacky. snacky. That boy was sucking Ew. back across the arena. It looked like he just had a lot of fun on that boy. Let the celebration start. Arizona's on the board. I love everything about this. We talk about how loose, about how much fun he's having away from the arena. Well, this is why. He is completely comfortable in his own skin, and it shows. And, Luke, we highlighted the age at 19, riding like a veteran. Yeah, he is. And last year at 18, year old, 18 years old, they said he had the most 90-point rides for the team. Now he's found himself being more comfortable showing up to these events, knowing how to communicate, knowing the Bulls, and you can see it as these events progress, how much better he's getting and how, more, how much more comfortable he's getting. He wants 42. Can Davi and Ricky Dolima change that? Do that, Eddie, the Bull. And now it's five for 45 at this point in the game. That five for 42 stat was coming in. So what we're saying is they need some help other than low snacking. They need some help right now. This bull right here was really tough to get by. I threw a big one, a row at him, and went right. And he just couldn't get there. And he came down over the front end right there. And it almost looked like he was expecting that bull to go left, almost like that bull's front shoulders were kind of leaning towards the left there and, and kind of felt him over to that side. And, and again, decided. you cannot say it a game plan. Yep. Two outs for both teams remaining. It is a close one that very much could be decided on points. You're taking a look at Cody Webster, Lucas Teodoro, Nathan Harp, the three bullfighters of the U.S. Border Patrol protection team. Good to have Cody Webster back in the mix. Lucas and Nathan, they've been busy this season. Yeah, on his head the next 26 seconds. That correct? Yes, he's on the clock right, right now. And that Ready? clock ticks down really fast. Are you good, there we go. Finishes. You see qualified ride, but we're also seeing flags on the dirt. There's a re-ride opportunity coming up for Colton Fritzlin and the Arizona Ridge Riders, but immediately their coaches, Paulo Krimber, said no way. The score's not going to be huge, score. Ryan, but standing we're here watching, that was a tough bull to get by for Colton score. Fritzlin. That was a Good tough job, bull for Chris. Colton. Colton just kept kept going, kept trying hard. He could have gave right, up, okay. could have bucked him off, but no, he said, no, I'm going to stay on you for the full eight seconds. Watch this because there's a couple of times where he could have been bucked off right there, gets back to the middle. I don't know how, but just kept fighting. He kind of gets tossed over the front end off the side, does what he needs to do to get there for eight seconds. And that score is 75 and three quarters. But remember, Arizona still got Nick Tetz waiting in the wings, and they're planning on him making the whistle. He's still good. He's still here. He's speechless. He's got to be 76 and a quarter to take the lead. But he comes down early. Furlon bucks off, and Arizona gets the win with outs remaining. Did he look similar or different? I, than? I think he's bigger now. Yeah? Yeah, because it, it's been a few years ago. But, yes, he was right there around the left, and it uh, looks like he's gotten a lot stronger now. He had a real good seat on score. him. Had a yeah. real good seat on him. Just got him back off his rope. And, uh, that's the best bull score we've seen in this game. And again, that's why he's here. Yeah. We have the best bulls in the world. He's strong now, Nick! He's strong now, Nick! Nick! Woo! Get him up! Get him up! Get him up! Tess takes it right to the whistle. The clock says it. Oh, you got to think they're going to go back and look. But that sideline is saying he got the ride. That's why he's on the team. <laughs> there was so much try there. I'd say Paulo Grimber's happy with the effort put out there by Nick Tetz. And to think Nick was sitting out there all season as a free agent. The Canadian champ comes down, unleash the beast, all season long sitting as a free agent. But, but you never know, right? I mean, you look at guys like Nick Tetz, like Cassio Diaz, the, the, Flourish in this situation. Yeah! Yeah, we got it. Come on. Okay, seven, nine, eight. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. Yeah! It's a, it's a ride, guys. He's got it. Yes, sir. 
three rides for Arizona. They've been searching for the win, and it took production from across the board. All started with Vitor Lo Snacky and ends with Nick Tetz, 88 and a quarter, and the Ridge Riders get back in the win call. Well, Roberts board crunch time. He finds what he's been searching for. The freedom are on the board. And for Roberts, his first ride of the 2023 season. That was a good bull ride from Casey Roberts. Right there around the left. And you can see he's having a lot of fun because at the end of this, he starts to loosen up to him and go to him. And he's trying to get all the points out of this bull. And he's about to. You know why? Because he's got that fire back. Look at the back of the bucket shoots. Guess who's back? Casey Roberts, not the only one that's back on the Oklahoma Freedom. They got an outlaw in town. Chase Outlaw is back. He's got to hurry right now. Uh -oh. Come on. Yes. Good wow. Right the hand. Doing exactly what they signed him on the stampede to do. He gets him on the board. It's got to be an 88 and a quarter to take the lead. Look, you really are cheering for your guys. I mean, Man. you're not holding back. You're just a, a fan like everybody else. You really have bought in. You are a part of the stampede family. Oh, I love it. it it's the energy. It's fun. And he made a great ride away from his hand. It was perfect. We got himself a game right now. There you go, one to one. Alan DeSouza stepping up. You said it opposite way of his hand. He said lights out. That's one. But you know what's there. You're trying to forget about it and focus on the task at hand. Swinging for the fences, and Circada finds the whistle. It don't matter, hurt leg or not, he can still do it. That was a great ride into his hand, and he just sat up there and rode him perfectly. You heard Coach say, stay there, Board Shazma. He knew the playbook, and he did. Stayed with him for the distance. Right there, that right leg's going to open up, and it's going to feel a little bit different with that cast slapping around the corner there. But Alex Cercada, great job, the wherewithal to just get in there, get to the eight seconds, and get the lead for your team. 85 points. You see Chase Outlaw right there. You also see Brendan Eldridge giving him a handshake. It was his bull. So neat to see guys that are coming back, riding. Brendan hopes to be back in the mix at some point, too. And then if not, they're still finding a way. You love it. Uh, yeah, I'm still. Let's get all of it out of him. Let him do it out there. Let's go. Let's go. Shut up. Shut up. Three-time world champ steps up once again. Silvano gets the ride. Will it be enough for the Stampede to get the win? I love that Coach McBride said, go out there and get as much as you can out of it. I told you, we've never seen this bull give the numbers that Silvano and Nashville needed, but we've never seen him matched up like today. He did it. it. Yes. 89 points. Silvano walks it off. Sabano, that's the champ. Nashville Stampede, great job. That's why he's in the closure position. He went fast in there. Bull had a great day. He rode him great. Yeah, really good job. Really good job. Very good. And, and second to the world champ, who was the rookie of the year as well. They got him. All day long. De that was Silva. a perfect bull ride. Not going to be the most points, but it was a perfect bull ride. That was a cool big Kiwi there. He does it again. Make that his fourth qualified ride from the leadoff position. And you can hear the Gambler fans what's, already what's going on? engaged. I love it. This is what it's about. I mean, I mean the entire crowd is booing Kansas City for doing their job. We've never seen this in bull riding before, but they're actually booing the opposing team. But still 84 and a half points for Winks and Enrique De Silva. Great job getting his team on the board. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, oh. He appreciates it.
that's it, but some scary moments now. But look at the job of those bullfighters. Another reason why we got the best bullfighters in the world. They got his attention, so Dalton right, get up. Unbelievable, and you see Ezekiel Mitchell who made his way into the arena there. What an awesome bull ride, though, yeah. away from his hand. I won't. I don't think he's going to be that 90 points. And, and I think but he rode part of, him. That's part of the reason why he's a little slow to get out, though, as well, because of the effort he put out during this eight seconds. Watch this back, making big moves with that right hand. Big moves. He kept that free arm up in front of him. He would always bring it back, and he stayed good control with it. That was a great ride away from his hand. Now, hey, Dalton Castle told me before he got on this bull, they have a history. He hauled this bull about five years ago, and he was going to try to ride him until he stopped to prove a point, and he dang near did right there. Saw him take a shot there on the side of the helmet, and it Obviously stunned him as you take a look at Cody Webster, Lucas Teodoro, Nathan Harp, and again, yeah. three of the that, absolute greatest. That hurts. Here. I know we got best in the helmets, but that ground still hurts. You got this mask. We're saying it could have been a rewrite opportunity on Big Kiwi, but instead they serve him up another one. Ooh. Wow. And now mast is slow to get up. Forty-four point bull score coming in. What power we saw in the after effects of that type of power. You mentioned that ground and how hard he hits as the sports medicine team now makes their way in. First qualified ride came in Anaheim. Then it was a re-ride in Nashville on Spice. Can he make it the third city in a row? Oh! Man. What moves, what hits, what bovine power we're seeing here in game number four. Wow, we knew this was going to be a very intriguing game, but not for the reasons it has been. I mean, watch this. Colt Hevelo putting out a great effort, trying to stay away from that bull, doing exactly what he just did. You could see him really kind of trying to lean back there, but he gets exposed, and watch this bull just bring him down over the front end and meet him halfway. That horn right up underneath the helmet. Ooh, he was putting out so much effort there, and he did get back off his rope, and that's what happens when you get back off of it. You need to stay up on your legs and ride on jump for jump. His dad rode, his uncles rode. He said it was in his blood. He always wanted to be here doing this. Cassio comes down, and yet another outlaw to take a shot on the Austin dirt. Well, I, again, I don't like the way he's going to come up here. Last weekend in Nashville, we knew he was having some trouble with that groin. He went to the doctor this week, had everything checked out. It checked out good, but again, he's limping out of here. He's going to be sore. And, and even the most subtle soreness in this sport will take a lot out of you. I didn't like to see him walk out like that either. But this bull was the real deal, right? He bucked. Got up in the air, had some hang time. Feet got a little light, kind of beat him around there, bucked him off. 46 points awarded for the effort you just saw that's, from Hart Candy. Huge. That is the best 46. score of the game. For the rest of the season, for the rest of history. He gets behind. To seven and 98, you gotta think they're going to take another look at this one. It wasn't for the lack of effort, though. Jose tried to the very end, got him behind, got his free arm behind him, and that bull did not let up. And he typically looks so flawless on the back of this bull. No score, seven six three, no score. Coming in, oh, Lemmy man. was perfect against the Outlaws in game play. Five for five. Now he moves to five for six. But the Gamblers do still get the win, courtesy of that huge Dalton Castle 87-point score. There is head coach Michael Gaffney. Tells him this bull belongs here. Whoa! Wow! Absolutely slammed on the steal. You want to talk about a bull with what we call a hair trigger. 
Them bulls get so been bucked so many times and know what's happening and all they heard was the shoot gate crack right there and then bulls just fire the gates not out of their way and that happens and he's very lucky that didn't turn into worse than it could have been it sounded like ross was already calling on felipe for the re-ride before even saying hey you okay that's to my take question it? who's yeah. got more of a hair trigger the bull or ross coleman because right there he's going hey you, you got your bull rope ready let's go are you ready to get back home? i mean it didn't take him long for anybody that knows Ross, did you really have <laughs> you to ask that question? Elismar is electric for the freedom. Rewrite opportunity turns into the first qualified ride of the game. I'm never going to doubt you again, Kate. You were doubting me before, Scott? I was a little bit suspicious. <laughs> I wasn't doubting, but what a great ride. The beginning of it to me started out a little sketchy. He's a little bit bad shape, strung out here. But when this bull picks it up, turns back, he gets settled in, goes to him. Great ride. First ride of the gate. Good call, Kate. I, on the other hand, I agreed with you 100%. I knew you were right. I had your back, Kate. Great job. Storm and Norman, the bull. Get out of the ride. Get out of the ride. Let's race. Go, let's race. Go, let's race. Get me. Get me. And it all oh, comes together, hung up. Good to see Luke get free, but slow to get back up. All season long, Ross Coleman has been touting this young man as being a star in the making. And every week I say, you're sticking with him, what's the deal? And every week he tells me, he's a star, just watch. He finally gets what uh, I believe is going to be his first qualified ride of the year. I don't know. But either way, Pink. it has been a brutal weekend, and now Missouri feeling the effects make here. Whistle. Now they're getting a re we got a re-ride regardless. Is this red flag? By watching this replay, I would say he's he's getting a score. And you can see sports medicine team there in the top left-hand corner. They got one more rider over there? And for Missouri. That's it's good news. It's, it's a score. Got the qualified okay. ride on the board. Yep. 83 will take the lead. You think he got it? Absolutely. The highs and lows all at once. You saw so, Ross so excited that finally Luke Marcello. finds a whistle. At the same time, he comes Marcello. down Marcello. 75 and a half. Scott, you Marcello, and the judges, different pages tonight. Well, on that defense, I am going to say I misunderstood you on the whistle, if you <laughs> made the whistle. <laughs> Not the 83. <laughs> Not the 83. Okay. They, did, they got that right. I don't know if I'd have been that low, but he shouldn't be winning first. He should be winning second. So let's talk about why you saw the score now it came off the board. It all comes down to Marcelo Procopia Pareda in the next eight seconds once that gate opens. 83 or better will win it for Missouri. That bull has built a name for himself through 88 outs based on this is what this team does. They're better than the team on the other side of the arena, and at the end of the day, that's what matters. That was one of them. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Boudreaux Campbell looking to get it started for Carolina on Hoka. Hey, and a great start. And a great finish for Carolina. That's what we've been waiting for from Boudreaux Campbell right there. The last few weeks has not went his way, but when you can run a bull underneath of him that bucks that hard, turns back into his hand, and he gets a clean start, that's what we expect from Boudreaux. They've moved Campbell all over the board, but perhaps in the leadoff spot, first time nodding his head as the number one man, could be... The new magic potion, Campbell converts for 88 and a half. And I love this because we talk about the gold buckles. You see Sage Kimsey, Cooper Davis in there. Josh Frost is taking a lot of the attention. Boudreaux Campbell's a world finals champ from 2020. This is a guy that was a world championship contender, but he has been the role player for Carolina. He's been the guy that takes what doesn't fit everybody else 
He fits right in that number one spot right now. Yeah. Unwritten bull. Josh Frost nods his head. Carolina gets on the board. And I love it. Sage Kimsey saying that is business. That is a business go, move by Josh Frost right there. You heard him say, uh-oh, going the other direction here. And that's why Josh Frost is such a blessing for Tiffany, Jerome, Austin Dillon, Richard Childress, the whole crew. Because of things like this, that bull starts to the right and then decides to change it back to the left. That's something that Frost does not care about. You just give me a bull and let me go to work. He does not waver, and I have become such a Josh Frost fan. Is that the best ride I've ever seen him make? No, but is that the ride that he will make every time and be reliable? Yes, so that makes me a fan. And for Carolina, Coach Jerome Davis told me Trevor Kastner is the one to get on that bull for us. He said he's the man to get the nod because he rides either direction, it doesn't matter, and he craves the tough bulls. Well, Kastner, the veteran, steps up aboard Wasted Days. You see qualified ride, but it is an automatic review for time. Oh, this is going to be big because now it's a point of Carolina trying to run the table. I mean, they're just trying to be perfect at this point. They have looked really good. And this is a big ride for Kastner, too, and another guy that's trying to kind of earn his stripes, knowing oh, that yeah. Darren Swearingen and these guys are going to be making their way back. And Trevor's going to get the score, and I am so happy for this. This is dating myself, even though I said 27 was last year. It wasn't. <laughs> I rode with what? Trevor Kastner, and he is a veteran. And for a veteran of his age to show up and get put on all the hard bulls that nobody else wants, that is exceptional. Set next here, Shoe Bubby the Bull. Comes down at six and change. And then the U.S. Border Patrol Protection Team goes to work. <laughs> Great job, Lucas Teodoro. And you can see the guys having a good laugh right now because they know he got out of there unscathed. He kind of got in his own little way there a little bit. Sandro Batista coming down. That's not going to be the highlight of, of this replay. Big, no. tall guy. Big, tall guy. And just... Just breaking at the waist, and when you break at the waist, what happens is all your weight goes forward, and when your weight goes forward, your feet want to come back, and then they come back and just drops him in there. And then right here, what other human beings on the face of the earth stand in front of him, get run over, bumped around, and then they stand up and laugh about it? Unbelievable. The guys are absolutely best of the best. You see Lucas Teodoro there on the screen, Cody Webster laughing at him, having a little fun, Nathan Harp in there as well. Nick is only about 30 miles from you, Scott. Buffalo chips the bull. And I wanted to say it'll be a big chance to get the families together and celebrate if he's able to get another one on board. But he comes down early here. They were looking for 90 on this one. I mean, they thought this was going to be a big, big matchup. And Nick Tetz rare is it you see him get in these positions as of late very rarely nick does a really good job of keeping his chin down and his chin got up there a little bit all his weight went back and then jerked the rope out of his hand and bucked him off on on a really good bull that that won't happen the next time nick gets on it obviously the little positive note there on his way out but this is the thing that made everybody in all of the different locker rooms come back in. And Scott, as an athlete, when you see a guy return to the locker room like this, that changes everything. Absolutely, and especially when this is part of a team now. Before, it was your buddy that got hurt in that, but now you're part of a team, and this means a lot when these guys can come back and support each other. Silva's dialed in once again. He brings the good juju aboard bad juju, and the outlaws are on the board. 
And Matt, I'm going to echo what you said about just momentum and confidence. That is not probably the trip they expected that bull to have. And then he does it, but he has confidence. Bull hips himself a little bit, then goes out there, turns back away from his hand. A month ago, that wouldn't have went that way. But because of the confidence and the momentum, he just keeps his chin down and gets a whistle. Bring up a great point. I think that bull was expected to come out of there and turn back to the left, but that hip making contact kind of changed his momentum, sitting back the other direction. Winkson was ready for it, reacted, and got to the score. I mean, they, intimidating. Comes down early, lands on his back, and takes a shot right on the chest. Good to see him up, but perhaps stung a bit. Four seconds that buck off time. Keep Ryan Cartwright has a full database that is uh, just an astronomical list of potential bull riders that they could pick up. And McBride went looking for a left-handed guy that was kind of a veteran that could step in here and give him an opportunity. That is not the opportunity Wellington was looking for right there. You saw that bull's back foot and where it landed. Not what he was looking for. Talking with our sports medicine team now. They're constantly shopping for guys. Julio Cesar Marquez. He's aboard black tie. Delarmy Marchi scouted the 19-year-old, and he stepped up huge here. Kansas City gets another one. And they might have just got the answer to my question a little bit earlier. Who's going to step in and fill that void of Marcus Math? Well, Julio just did it. This was a really good bull ride. And a good backflip. You can see this bull almost wanted to turn out backwards and then gathered up. They obviously knew this bull was going to be dialed in and go to the right. But this bull's bucking and kicking, and he's making all the great moves. And what I was going to mention, too, is one thing we always have to take into consideration is he gets off good. You need to keep these guys healthy. Doesn't matter how good you ride. If you get off bad, you're not going to be healthy for the next one. I agree with both of you. It was a great ride, a great backflip, and a great start for Kansas City in this game. Scott, you got to take us back to the start on this one. Yeah, please, tell me what just happened. Well, I'm trying to figure it out myself. The first <laughs> thing I caught is as he's nodding, somebody else is holding his free hand. I noticed that too, Scott. I'm glad you pointed that out. I'm kind of waiting for the replay on that. And we just looked at each other a little bit dumbfounded here as this happened. And Who is that? Do you recognize the hand? I believe that's Silvano Alves. Oh, yeah. yep. Let me ask you something. Hypothetically, is that to keep him from reaching back and holding on to the back of that buck and shoot? There's definitely a theory to their madness there on exactly that. It's something, but to me, it wasn't working what needed, and it was just maybe a little too much. over 50 percent this season and incredible what he's accomplishing as a member of the nashville stampede look no further than the oldest guy on the roster to lead by example and step up and just continuing to show you talk about the youth that can learn from him well they're going to learn a lot because no matter what the situation alvez is putting out production for his team and i am confident in saying he is riding the best he's rode since he won his last world title. And it's been a few years now. He's just rose into this occasion. The team's format suits him to a T. Got a big chance to close that gap here. He can be a lot of points on this bull. And he does it again. Diaz. Finds the whistle and 
better than 82 and a half. He also takes over as the number one man in the MVP race. My question the last few times we've seen Cassio Diaz is how healthy is that groin? We've seen him limp out of these arenas, but then we've seen him come back, put together a great ride like that, and then dance. Uh, dance his little tail off on the shark cage, but this is what impresses me the most is his riding. He is impressing me so much, and a fun little fact is when you make the whistle, things hurt a lot less than if you get bucked <laughs> off. Winning heals everything. 85 and a half, and with that, Diaz just overtook Lemmy in the MVP race. That's incredible right there. The young 21-year-old really making a statement this season. I think he's still trying to get 100% healthy, but bigger picture, I think we've got a lot of guys that are doing a lot of great things for Kansas City, and JW is giving the guys with a hot hand the opportunity. He's going to need to keep that same kind of mental focus on this pool to get by Pete's deja vu. Everything about that ride I like so much. Versus Friday night, he makes a good ride, gets off bad. Here he makes a better ride, gets off good. Anybody that was questioning after his concussion protocol and that if he was healthy, he just answered him right there. I love the move by Michael Gaffney putting Dalton Castle in that number one leadoff position. Why? Because he can go out there and watch the end of this ride. He really opens up with that right foot and shows that he is in complete domination of this bull. Get the momentum going their way. Get the crowd on their feet. Put all the pressure on the other team and get a big score to start it off. 87 and a half. Texas leads the league in so many categories, especially when it comes to the number of rides they put up. It's head-to-head. -head. You want more rides than the other team, but if you've got the same number of qualified rides, those ride scores really come into play. So 87 and a half, huge score. General manager there, J.J. Gotch, loving his star player. Cannot wait to see them all do it simultaneously. Keep it! Gets forward, takes a shot, the helmet goes flying. But Randolph, talking back to that bull, wanting another shot aboard American U. That is the look of pure anger. We talked about how tough this sport is. Watch this Las Vegas replay here. Takes a shot, helmet goes flying, he gets flung to the side, and then watch this, Scott. 90% of the people in this world that would take that shot would be laying there sucking their thumb. <laughs> and he stands up mad because he knows he can ride that bull. That's what he's thinking right now is, I can ride that bull. If they run that bull back in right now, he rides it. Go do it, little brother. 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 two-time champ, the home team, they take it. That's the Jose Vitor Lemmy that we've come to expect. You see their general manager, J.J. Gotch, they went all in on their franchise athlete, and that is why. A salute to the leadership of their team in this city from a guy that is arguably the greatest we've ever seen. J.J. Gotch with a big smile on his face, and that guy just keeps making memories. Anybody else in bull riding that gets bucked off four in a row, nobody even talks about it. But with him, because he is so great and so good, all of a sudden it's like the world is falling apart. But he just proved there it was a minor little bump in the road. Untested was unproven at this level. And here comes the champ showing he could conquer anything. For the effort, 87 and a half, he gets his team the win, and he takes over in the MVP standings as well. Yeah, the young 22-year-old college champ has got a chance. Keep running! Murray! Murray! And he 
he finds the whistle. Gleaves goes for 90 in his first ever out as a Texas Rattler for PBR teams. And now finds the whistle again. This time it's for 87 and a half. When he gets to the requisite eight, it is big. Absolutely. And what this does is it saves space for Texas because it creates momentum for tomorrow. And the thing that they have to sit back and look at is they didn't get blown out in this game now. They only lost by one goal. Watching this Can-Am cam right now, he is absolutely perfect. Squarely in the middle of that bull for all eight seconds. Dominates his performance. He's going to be... He's going to be very happy with that performance. They're not going to be happy with the loss, but they close on a high note, and he gets it done for them. I'm really, I'm really surprised. But with that being said, a few of their key guys have been out that I think were just the leaders, and now we're starting to see these guys step up. Davis does it again. This time it's aboard Painkiller. First time they're matching up, and... No test for the champ. When we talk about these lineups and moving and shifting guys around, I think the number one spot that leadoff position is best, not only for Cooper Davis to kind of get it out of the way, but for his entire team, because he steps up in a leadership role, kind of as an assistant coach to Jerome Davis. So once he gets done, gets that first eight seconds put together, he goes right into coaching mode. So great move by Jerome Davis leading off with Coop. Carolina gets on the board early and that's what they wanted to do, put the pressure on the opposing team. Why? Because Kansas City is really good out the gate, just as Carolina is. But He's not got a lot of time to do it. That's right. You have to stay on your bowls. City gets on the board. It's going to be a close one here. It really is. You know, this bull right here didn't have the intensity and the fire. He had a change in direction, which will give him a few extra points. But once again, we go, we talked about it. We want to see them big scores. But at the end of the day, and I just say it over and over again, if you ride all five-year bulls, you're very rarely, or if ever, going to lose a game. And it is enough to take the lead 86 and a quarter. Yeah, back and forth early here in the opening position. And you can see Kansas City's uh, lineup on the back of the bucket shoots. They are fired up. And a lot of that comes from Marcus Mass being back in their corner. The thing is, is he's finally in the state where he wants to ride bulls. Ooh. Smooth Whiskey was his dancing partner. Not the nicest partner to have on a Sunday. Comes down and takes a shot. Do stock contractors do that on purpose, call them smooth when there's really nothing smooth about them? I think they have a sick sense of humor lots of times, <laughs> for sure. It's kind of disgusting when you think about it. What's not disgusting is the bull power that we're seeing here. And Boudreaux gets in trouble early, and we know that you can't let that happen in this sport. And I would have lost a lot of money in Vegas on that bet right there because that bull was set up. They rode that bull earlier this weekend, got a big score on him, and I thought that bull was going to really fit Boudreaux. And he just kind of let one get away, he got forward a little bit, feet come back, but he's working at it. The positive note there is in that first real-time shot, I thought he got stepped on, but on that replay we could see that that bull's feet actually missed him. Good news for Carolina. Expect more of those here as we go to Trevor Kastner. Twisted steel is the bull. And my goodness, do not like the shot we just saw Kastner take there. Well, and you got to remember, Trevor Kastner is not a, a young man in this sport. At 35 years of age, he's been kind of semi-retired. And so, you know, the wear and tear on a guy's body that has been tearing up the road for so long is going to come into play in a moment like this. Absolutely. And regardless of your age here, when you take a hit that hard to the ground and with that much force, it just takes everything out of you. And he hits his head here pretty hard. And 1,800 pounds slamming you to the dirt. And how quickly this game can change. One day ago, he was one of the heroes of this team with a huge 87-point score, helping Carolina get the win. And now takes quite a shot here. Good to see him on his feet, getting helped out by the sports medicine team. 
We highlighted Kansas City's Marcus Mass at the top of the show. He posted this on social media, sharing the news, saying, unfortunately, took a bad uh, spill last night, fractured my L1, and then saying, fortunate enough to still be walking on my own two feet. I'll be back before we know it. Great to hear from the leader of the Outlaws, and he is standing by right now in the arena with Flint. Here with one and only Marcus Mass. Marcus, uh, talk about the last 48 hours. It's It's been an interesting weekend, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been interesting to say the least, but I'm I'm up and walking, so I can always be thankful for that. I mean, it's, it's been kind of tough last 48 hours, but we're, uh, we're going to thank God we're still walking. You've indicated to me you are in a lot of pain, sore. You've never been sore like this. Got to make you feel a little better being here with your teammates, though. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd much rather be back there helping them, though, but... We're, uh, we're going to try and be here and support them as best we can. What's it look like moving forward the rest of the season? You're still a teammate. You're going to play a role, travel a little? I'm still waiting to hear the word on how long we're out. But, yeah, we're. Uh, I don't think we're going to take any time off anytime soon. Good to see you here, Marcus. Good luck. Thank you, Plant. True religion is the bull. Do the dance, Diaz. It's time to celebrate once again. Kansas City puts another one on the board. And I hope the judges get it right because I have to pick on the judges with his stats. He has three 90s. In my mind, should be four. His average riding score is 89.75. It should be 90, and they need to give it to him because this guy right now is riding as good as anybody, not only in the PBR teams, in the world. Look, I know you're still workshopping that nickname for this guy, but let me change it for you because I heard it coming from the back of the Kansas City sidelines, and that is oh, I MVP, MVP, and that is what they're all screaming about Cassio right now. And with that ride, 86 and three quarters, he did overtake Jose Vitor Lemmy and move back into the number one spot in those MVP standings. He, he accepted it, he dealt with it, and he's gonna fix it right now. Gets the ride, and Arizona is first to get on the board. Oh, and Nick Tense has brought new life to Arizona. It is incredible what this guy has been able to do. The, the problem is this was a field day for Nick. I mean, it, it was too easy for the Canadian champ. Too easy. That's the thing is, but with that being said, a score is a score. It's not going to be the biggest score we've ever seen from Nick, but he did his job. And the thing that I like the best about it, once again, if I'm the coaching staff, I look. He recovered from last night, stepped up tonight, and just makes an absolutely dominating ride. Gets the most points he possibly can of with what he had to work with. They went out, they found a left-handed guy named Wellington, and uh, they really like him so far. He's aboard Dirty B, and he goes the distance. Nashville gets on the board. You can start to understand why Justin McBride likes him. Right here on this ride, we talk about guys wanting left-handers and right-handers because bulls will turn different ways, and people are stronger in that. And most of the time, as Luke referred to earlier, most bull riders like the bulls to turn back into their hand better. And a bull like this has got unbelievable timing, perfect. And this is a great matchup because it allows him to get a win, not just for the team, but for this young man himself to build confidence. We said it earlier, Silvano Alves needs a little help. His celebration even looks like uh, Silvano there kind of pounding his chest. Good score there, 84 and three quarter points. Let's go back and see what actually happened if you miss it the first time around. We're going to watch that right. Oh, look at that right foot. Yeah, Matt, if, uh, down here, he still had that right foot through the slats of that shoot when that bull acted up, taking his time. You can see it right there. They're trying to make a decision if he's okay to get on. Looks like he's going to try, but this is for real. And get out of the shoot before that clock counts to zero. There's the nod. He made it around the corner, and he takes it all the way. 
DeSouza sells to eight. Nashville gets another one. And so there you go. They benefit from that rewrite opportunity earlier. And we and we knew numbers-wise he should be able to get by this bull. But again, a bull going away from his hand, it's, it's very difficult to make happen. But we are hearing that it is under official review to make sure he still had contact with that rope at the requisite eight. It's going to be at the end, Westy. Right, right here. Whoop! Stop it, back it up. Or contact okay. with the bull. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's going to be slow. so close. Come on, come on, come on, bump it. Whoop! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, he gets a marking, guys. You want to talk about score. splitting hairs right there. Ty goes to the runner, though. In this scenario, in every scenario, Ty goes to the runner. Good thing Whiplash was not fluffy. It's a really good ride. Don't get lazy. Stay up there. Stay up there. That's why we practiced for 10 seconds. For that. That's you. You're going to be a great, great bull rider. Okay? Hey, good job being tough today. McBride has to be satisfied with his secret solution. Can he? Does he? He did it! White Horse becomes the first to conquer Dudette Eddie. He gets the ride. Is it enough to walk it off for the Ridge Riders? I think absolutely enough to walk it off for the Ridge Riders. And no matter the outcome, Keyshawn Whitehorse has been struggling. He has been continuing to fight mentally, physically, trying to regain the confidence of himself and this team. And that eight seconds just did it all. We've been waiting to see that Keyshawn show up. The only person that's been waiting longer is him. There. That's right. Absolutely Still right. You can there. see Alan Jordan, a replay official, taking a look at it. Still good there. And, and Keyshawn really pumping that left Still arm. There. It's a ride, guys. Mark him. It's a ride. Yeah. And the Ridge Riders roll. White horse. Picks up his first qualified Everyone ride of the season, and it is a you're game right, winner right, to keep right, Arizona alive right, in the event. That's you, Andre. You. Woo! 89 and a quarter is awarded for the effort, and what an effort it was. And he, uh, we talk about his struggles. Take a look at this sonic taste of victory, the sweet taste of 89 and a quarter points from one of the guys that were struggling more than anybody on their roster, stepped up and gets the win for Arizona. You want to talk about a life-changing ride? That is it right now to change everything for Keyshawn. You know, Kate, you mentioned that yes, toughness. Win. That is something ahead, that's win. bred into these Australians. He will come down early here. It's his first time seeing action in PBR teams. And Bulls are built differently everywhere. Scott, you wrote Bulls in a lot of places. So we are seeing a challenge. But to continue that story, is there a sense of having to get used to this type of bull? There definitely is. There's a level where you just keep stepping up the bull level. But make no mistake, in Australia, they have great bulls. And somebody like Quinn would have already seen this caliber bulls. It's just not day in and day out. We talk about toughness being bred in these guys. The other thing you can count on every time is there will never be a lack of effort from these Australians. And I mean, look, even as that bull starts to come down, he tried to stay focused, tried to keep his eyes on that bull's shoulder. And you can see the frustration there of Coach Ross Coleman. That challenge not going his way. Yeah, it was a good challenge, wanting to see if the stumble was enough to cause the buck off. It was almost as though Coach and our official at the same time said, ah, not quite enough. So Missouri just three outs remaining. Ten Finally settled in. Three for three in those games in Music City. Be done! Sam Murray! 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 Fielder finds success again. Backs up his perfect Nashville weekend with another ride here in Texas is on the board. What I like about Brady is he's just quietly going about his business exactly the way that coach Cody Lambert wants him to. He's quiet in the shoots. He gets out quick. He's just quietly riding bulls. But the thing is, the numbers keep adding up. What you're saying is, 
He's boring. Just and he's what perfect for Cody wants. Lambert. He's absolutely perfect for Cody Lambert. And when I say that, I say it with all due respect, not just in the arena, but hear me out. He's boring in the hallway, in the hotel, in the car ride over to the arena. I mean, he is just Gosh, a Matt. cool customer. That's him. That's his disposition. Never gets too rattled about anything. Playing into that here, but it only takes one. Right in, Marcelo. Go to him, Marcelo. Go to him. Go to him. Go to him. We're seeing it happen again. Yet another guy from Missouri getting four just way too quick. You know, to go back to Flint's point on this, it makes a lot of sense because if you watch, as soon as this bull turns right here, he slides back off his rope a little bit because he's not allowed to lift on his rope to keep his weight down. And if his wrist is bugging him, that'll make a big difference. To take the lead and stay alive. Felipe Furlon aboard Spooky. Furlong, ever so close. The clock here says 7-71. Seven and 71. Matt, you started to celebrate. Yeah, I, I, super exciting. And you heard Ross Coleman saying, go left, bull, go left, because they knew when that bull turned back to left, he had a chance to really show off. And now it is the seventh time they have been shut out. And this, is, this one's going to sting because this – is what they thought was the magic formula around to the left for Felipe. And the interesting thing about this, when we come back to the coaching perspective, they'd already used their challenge and they don't have that to use again. Was it a long time to make up some time? Yes, but was there a chance? Maybe, but they didn't have that opportunity. So a little different than when JW decided to not use hers and they still get the win to close it no matter what, because you do not want to create them bad habits. Earlier today, it was Texas with one score that wasn't enough to get the win here. One score was all they needed to get the win. So Texas takes this one. They moved to one and two on the weekend, but the two teams highlighted Austin Gamblers, Oklahoma Freedom. They are next to play. The Gamblers get the win. They take the event title here at home. Oklahoma wins it. We move to extra outs with five teams. 10 more outs to decide it right here in Austin. Dalton Castle, Washington Red, Red matching up right out. now. And there's a backstory here. Castle combines with Washington Red and gets Austin on the board. There's a backstory I was telling you. Brennan Eldred owns this bull, and he has begged Dalton to get on this bull time and time and time again. And Dalton has denied him that matchup. Well, at midnight last night, Dalton called him, and he said, I can't, I can't tell you no anymore. We're matching up tomorrow, and this is a big one. 89 and a quarter. The Gamblers hit the jackpot with their first pocket ace, and they're rolling it home. Dalton was just waiting to get on that ball at somewhere where it counted. He is riding so good with such confidence. That is an incredible young man right now. Dalton and Brennan, Brennan, best of buddies. They were both ecstatic about this matchup today, and rightfully so. And for Castle, he's the second rider we've seen in the league that is perfect three for three this weekend should fit him again stylistically oh. looks left goes right and then Zerkata who's already battling back from a broken leg gets stepped on square in the back yeah and in this scenario that broken leg is the least of his worries I, I really thought this is one that he would enjoy getting on but watch this there's nothing fun about this landing and more importantly where these feet land right there and thankfully we talk about these protective vests they're not there to to keep the bull from making contact but it is there to spread the impact and you can see it kind of make that force that into a glancing blow and thankfully for Alex it kind of had a little smile on his face a minute ago 
Austin Richardson cannot Take look charge. at the numbers. Take charge. He's got to step up. Take charge. There you go. Take charge. Take charge. Take charge. Take charge. Oh. You saw him move forward, but Richardson is cheering like he made the ride. The clock stopped at 6 and 50, and they'll go back and take a look. Look, this is going to be close because in real time, it looked like he, he touched that ball with his free hand, and that's why the clock stopped. But the good news is we can go back, and Alan Jordan will be able to look and see definitively if that left hand makes contact or not. And where this is going to come from is he's just riding this bull with ridiculous ease and gets to feeling good and goes to spurring. And when he tries to spur, everything comes loose and this bull just causes it him to fall forward. And we're going to see it right coming up right here. When you talk about opening up like that, you make yourself more vulnerable and you show that you can control. This performance, and you expose yourself to a degree, and then throw all that conversation out the door because all that matters is he got a qualified ride. The green flags go to waving, and it is another one for the Gamblers. And now Oklahoma on their heels in a must-ride situation. 87 points awarded for the effort. It tends to be in that 88-point range. Here he's aboard Electric Avenue. Great point. Stayed with him, gets hung up, and takes a shot. Remember, Roberts was sidelined last season, beginning of this season, with injury. And yet another member of the Freedom taking a hit. And he just kind of got back to getting that ball rolling, and they're really looking forward to the return of Chase Outlaw coming up soon. Slow to get up, but I, I like I like that. As a coach, I like the frustration that the young 21-year-old is showing right now. He's a college national champ. We've seen him, as Kate mentioned, put up some big numbers, including some 90s. And again, the slightest mistake can cost you a lot. And it's, it's amazing in bull riding how quick things change because honestly, I was like, this bull is not bucking. Yep. And we run into that scenario where maybe he bucks just soft enough that they get the re-ride and still have an opportunity and then just at the blink of an eye small mistake turns into a zero and not only that could be an injury i'm your daddy tried to sit him into the steel early but he's able to prevail and get on the board for Oklahoma. Yeah, big cry for Olsmar. You can see kind of taking a little sigh of relief, if you will. The pressure was kind of off, but again, I think with this Oklahoma team, there's always pressure to just find a positive note at the end of a, a day like this, and a qualified ride means a lot to this kid. Well, for Oklahoma, what they have to take from this is this ride right here, and from start to finish, he had the opportunity, knowing they couldn't win the gate, when that bull piled up in the front and give him not the best go, he could have easily just given up knowing there was nothing on the line, and yeah. he didn't. He kept his head down and makes a great ride. And I'm listening to the city and this arena in the background. This is going to be fun if he gets it done. Left, in. left, 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 left. makes it happen the coaching from the back of the steel was on point what a way to bring down the confetti right here inside moody center you get the ride austin had the win and now it's time to celebrate it's their third event win of the season and now they do it on their home dirt austin gamblers get the win but that was an even bigger win for Ezekiel Mitchell, reminding himself that he can rise to the occasion. One thing in bull riding is guys get really good at lying to themselves. And then the trouble comes when you can't believe your own lie anymore. But now it's not a lie. This is a huge step forward for Ezekiel. And not only that, the team's confidence in him. And that was Mitchell's first qualified ride 
this season as he gets congratulations from the rest of his team. Well, the Gamblers win it big here, and Flint is standing by with the home team. Down there on the arena floor, Coach Michael Gaffney and the entire Austin Gamblers team. Listen, last year you come to the inaugural team event here in your home city. You let it slip away. No slipping this year. You had some guys rise to the occasion. And that's what we've got. We've got a group of guys here that are just, uh, you know, we, we're going to stumble and we're going to fall. All the teams are. But these guys come here every time to, and they give it their all. This is a brutal sport. I can't express to the fans, you know, how tough this is on these guys to rise up every weekend and give it their all. And these, these cats, every one of them, are ready to come into the game whenever we ask them to and give it 110%. I just I can't be any more prouder and, and so fortunate to be the head coach of the Gamblers for the Durbin family. And I just, uh, and JJ, and again, our staff are just, it's just such a, a fabulous family. And uh, I'm just, I'm very grateful. A week off on Oklahoma City. Yeah, it'll be a nice, again, a little bit of a reset. Give these guys a little recharge time and uh, we'll come back to Oklahoma City and, and give them hell again. In their home arena, in their home city, Coach Michael Gaffney, the Austin Gamblers, victors for the weekend. We're officially at the halfway point, and as you look at the Road to Vegas season standings, the Austin Gamblers are proving you will have to go through them if you want a PBR team's championship title. Yeah, right now they're their clear-cut favorite. I mean, they have been on a roll since day one. Austin takes a commanding lead. They are without a doubt the team to beat this season. And that wraps up the PBR Camping World Team Series Gambler Days here in Austin. Congratulations again to the home team, Austin Gamblers, picking up their third event win this season. PBR teams will be off next week. Enjoy the Labor Day holiday. And join us in Oklahoma City for Freedom Fest, September 8th through the 10th. From Matt West, Scott Schiffner, Flint Rasmussen, Luke Branquino, and our entire crew, I'm Kate Harrison. Thanks for watching the PBR Camping World Team Series right here from Austin, Texas.